these are very important point because people have different opinion concept belief about religion what is religion human beings are the only living beings in this universe who have a religion others have no particular religion what is the reason human mind human intelligence is so advanced by birth the mind that others got they can use only for their living or their pleasure for their food for their protection for their enjoyment they do not think beyond that but human beings have extraordinary intelligence that intelligence is very strong if it is not trained or guided properly they can misuse that intelligence to destroy the whole world another living being cannot do that now that is why religion is needed religion does not mean religious labels like buddhism hinduism christianity islam they are labels religion means certain principles that we have to follow to maintain our human dignity to develop human values to maintain human qualities therefore only religion can do that by knowing everything in this world even scientists also cannot train the human mind but religion can do that according to their experience they had for a long period according to the scientists they say it has taken 4 million years for us to live as human beings today it is a gradual development not created by anybody at once but according to their experience they had the more they developed their mind and thinking power more experience about their life what is good what is bad what is moral what is immoral and how 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 to do our work without harming bluffing cheating disturbing others and how to maintain peace and how to gain happiness are these things not given by the god or anybody else but according to our gradual development of our mind through our experience we realized ah uh, then they we came to know there must be some sort of uh, energy for us to maintain this human mind so all the other religions thought there must be a creator who control everything in this world and that creator is responsible for our life therefore our duty is to believe and follow 
the religious laws given by them. That's all. But as far as Buddhism is concerned, not only Buddhism, many intellectuals in many parts of the world, you see, it is not that God created the man. Man created the God. It is concept that appeared in the man's mind. Why? Human beings could not understand natural phenomena, universal law, cosmic energies, what these energies are. Therefore, they thought there must be somebody who create, who maintain all these things. Then the concept of God created in the human's mind. Later, they introduce that human beings were created by the God. Many intellectuals have mentioned this. So Buddha is a religious teacher who advised us not to become slaves to God because we have a thinking mind to understand things properly if we train this mind. Uh, then, without using any religious labor, if we maintain our mind without allowing this mind to create evil, wicked, cruel, harmful, dangerous thing, and develop the mind to maintain peace and happiness and satisfaction by developing sympathy, kindness, compassion, honesty and harmony and understanding. Now then, by maintaining these good quality, we learn how to make use of this life to find out the purpose of our life. Because many people do not know the purpose of life. They say, God knows the purpose. He is the Creator. As Buddhists, we do not agree with that. Each and every person is responsible his or her life. There is nobody else to take the responsibilities of our life. Therefore, we had to develop our mind, our life individually. Then we become harmless, respectful, noble human beings who can live peacefully without creating violence and bloodshed and war and adapting any wicked or cruel thing. If we cannot train our mind, there is no point of praying and worshipping and performing rites and rituals and ceremonies in the name of religion. I told you just now, labels are not important. If we have religious principles, if people maintain these religious principles without any label, there is no competition, no challenges, no jealousy, no violence, and 
no problems, no conversion, because all are following the religious principle. But today they are trying to drag others into their religion, our religion, my religion. If there is no label for that, there is nothing to challenge. Our duty is to observe these religious principles. And now, the purpose of religion is to train, to develop, to cultivate our human mind, to make use of this life very respectable way, without enslaving ourselves to worldly sensual pleasure, without suffering, torturing in the name of religion, by leading a normal life. Uh, that is the method introduced by the Buddha as religious way of life. Not because fear of God or fear of anybody, but knowing these things are good, these things are bad, these things are moral, these things are immoral, these things are harmful, these things are harmless, uh, that understanding. When this understanding is there, each and every human being can live peacefully, without fear, without suspicion, without anger, without jealousy, without uh, violence. People are praying and worshipping all over the world. But violence and bloodshed and uh, war are spreading all over the world. But religions cannot train their mind, make them to understand that it is wrong, it is bad, it is cruel. Uh, here now you can understand, most important aspect of a religion is not only, only worshipping and praying and offerings and performances, but to train our mind. How to train the mind? When an evil thought appeared in our mind, Always evil thought appear in our mind because there are so many evil thought by nature and the good thoughts also. So when such evil thought appear in the mind, if we have developed, trained our mind, then we have courage not to do that. Ah, that is the way how to train our mind. When good thought appear in our mind, we must try to make use of these good thoughts for the well-being of others and for our own benefit, mean for our peace and happiness. Uh, now you can understand what is religion, why do we need a religion? By developing this intelligence, you discover everything in this world. Scientists have done wonderful things in this world. Without depending on God or religion, by using their independent intelligence, they have developed, they have discovered atom. Since there is no training, proper guidance in their mind, they produce nuclear weapons to destroy the whole world. Uh, that is the danger of human intelligence if we have not developed, trained this mind properly. When we train our mind properly, 
we can understand this is wrong, this is wicked, this is harmful, we create suffering, uh, then we try not to do this. When certain good thought appear, such as our sympathy, kindness, compassion, harmony, understanding, honesty, we try to develop these good thought. Then there won't be any trouble in this world. All these troubles that exist in this world created by human beings, not by devil or ghost or God, but only by human beings. And other living beings like animals and some other invisible living beings do not create such violence and disturbances in this world. The Buddha has mentioned this in his saying, Dhammapada, the first saying, Mano Pubbangama Dhamma, only three words, but very meaningful. Human mind is responsible for all good and bad things that exist in this world. If there, are no, if there is no human mind, there are no good things, there are no bad things in this world. United Nations, when they were drafting their constitution, they have mentioned this. War created by the human mind. At the same time, Peace also must come from the human mind. Peace never come down from heaven or God. Simply by praying we never gain peace. When we withdraw our anger, jealousy, grudge and enmity, evil, wicked thoughts from our mind, peace is there. Therefore it must come from the human mind. They are repeating what the Buddha has said. Human mind is responsible for all good and bad things that exist in this world. Now you can understand why religion is needed. Then, how to choose a proper religion? The Buddha has given certain advices for us to consider, to choose, to find out a suitable religions, because there are so many concept, belief, tradition, way of life they introduce as religions. The Buddha says, you should not accept a religion thinking that this is our tradition, this is our custom, this is our way of life. Because many of those traditions and customs created by primitive people long ago who could not understand real nature of human mind and what is happening in this world. Therefore, time has come, the Buddha says, for us not to accept all our traditional belief and practices as truth. Therefore, you have to consider very carefully. If those traditional practices are harmful and meaningless, better not to accept them. If they are significant and useful, accept them. Uh, that is the first advice. Second thing, the majority here in this country or in this world follow one particular religion. By thinking the majority in this world follow this religion. Therefore we also must follow this religion. The Buddha says no. All are not understanding intellectual people in this world. 
Therefore, you do not follow blindly. Just because majority follow this religion. You had to think by using your common sense, understanding, uh, then you can find out what they believe, what they practice, are right or wrong. Therefore, don't accept a religion thinking majority follow this religion. Then the, another advice is, people come and talk a lot about their religion. Miraculous power, supernatural power, and so many things to influence you. But you should not accept anything what people talk about religion. You have to observe, you have to investigate, you have to find out, you have to think, and uh, then you can accept. Again, he said, you should not accept any religion by adapting your belief. You say, I believe this. You believe because your understanding is not perfect, not correct. You believe. Certain things that you cannot understand also, you believe. This belief, later, when you develop your mind, your intelligence, your understanding, you will come to know these beliefs are wrong. Therefore, at the initial stage, the belief that appear in our mind, we should not accept without considering very carefully. Therefore, Buddha did not encourage anybody to develop belief, but understanding. The Buddha started his mission with right understanding. In the Eighth Noble Path, first item is Samadhiti, right understanding. You must try to understand. After understanding, you must practice. After practicing, you can experience. Then belief is not necessary. Adi is the method taught by the Buddha. Again, when you see certain things, when you hear certain things, you feel these things are correct. Because your understanding capacity is not very deep, therefore your emotion or your craving encourage you to accept. The Buddha says, you must be very careful. Just simply to please your mind, your emotion. Do not accept any religion. According to your own experience, you can understand why it is bad why it is good, uh, then you can understand. Example, he advised us not to destroy any living beings. Then he says, if you cannot understand why it is wrong, attanam upamankatva nahaneyanagati when another person come to kill you, how do you feel? That feeling is enough for you to understand why it is bad. Not necessary to depend on Buddha or God or anybody else. You can understand why it is bad. When you lost your property, stolen by somebody, how do you feel? Uh, when you go and steal others' property, uh, they also gain the same feeling that you had. Uh, this is the Buddha's way of teaching. 
through our own experience we can understand. Not because of God, not because of hell, not because of devil, but by using your intelligence you can understand. But people are lazy to develop their mind this understanding capacity. Simply they believe certain things not knowing whether it is right or wrong. Just believe. Again, we should not accept a religion by depending on divine power. We can gain everything what we need through the influence of God or divine beings. But this is our imagination. Because our thinking power is very low, therefore we think we can gain what we want from the divine being or from God. Then we believe. But there are many others who do not have any religion. They never claim they are belong to this religion or that religion. But when you study their way of life, you can see that many of them lead a very gentle life. Knowing these things are wrong, wicked, cruel, immoral, dangerous, they stop without committing such evil thought. Otherwise, people stop doing bad things, thinking God may punish us if we do this thing. If not, we have to go to hell and suffer. Therefore, we don't know do that. That is selfishness. The Buddha's advice is not to depend on God, not to depend on hell, to stop your bad deed. Knowing that these things are bad, harmful. Again, they do a lot of good deeds, some services to others to release their sufferings and uh, problems and disturbances and weaknesses and sicknesses and old age without depending on God to gain any reward. But if people say God will reward us if you do this service, then you are selfish. Because if you don't get any reward from God, you don't want to do any service to anybody. If there is no punishment from God, you are not scared to do any wicked, cruel, harmful thing. But those free thinkers, by using their independent mind, they try not to do many bad things and to do good things. Uh, that is what the Buddha wanted to tell us. He said, You should not accept my teaching, thinking that the Buddha is a great man in this world, by depending on the Buddha. You never learn anything. You have to think. You must try to understand According to your own experience, you can understand why it is bad, why it is good, without depending on the Buddha. You should not say, oh, I cannot do this because the Buddha says we should not do this, or God says we should not do this. If they have not said anything, although it is harmful or dangerous, you can do that. Ah, see the Buddha's way of teaching. You must understand. Through this understanding you must try to avoid certain bad things, try to do some service to others. That is religious way of life. 
then miraculous power, supernatural power. There are no such miraculous powers in this world. No supernatural powers. When we cannot understand how these things take place, uh, then we believe this is a miraculous power. This is a supernatural power. One day, when we developed our mind to understand, uh, then we will come to know, oh, it is not supernatural or miraculous, natural. Therefore, many people accept religion thinking that there is supernatural power and a certain thing that they cannot gain by leading a normal way of life. The Buddha's advice is not to go to extreme, not to become slaves to your sensual worldly pleasure. On the other hand, not to torture, not to suffer in the name of your religion. You can lead a very normal life and don't try to enslave yourself to sensual pleasure. Then you won't be able to lead a religious way of life because you can do any bad thing, any wicked thing for you to indulge your senses. So you have to consider very carefully how to make use our human life, how to maintain our human values, how to develop our humane qualities, and how to develop our human dignity and understanding. But followers of many religions in this world never consider all these things. At once they say, God says we should not do this. God says we must do this. The Buddha says we must do this. By thinking, by depending on them. The Buddha said don't depend on anybody. You also have a thinking mind to understand. This is bad, this is good. Therefore, you can say like this. I know this is bad. The Buddha also said this is bad. And then you are right. Uh, don't depend on them. Thinking, Since he has said like this, we should not do that. That is childish. Small children's way of life. We are matured. We have understanding capacity in our mind. Therefore, accept a religion by thinking whether it is reasonable, practicable, and useful, and respectable, without becoming slaves. And then, what do we gain by following or practicing a religion? Many religions the followers of those religions believe the main purpose of religion is for them to go to heaven and enjoy their life forever. The Buddha has said, there is no place here in this universe where a living being can exist forever. Everything is subjected to anicca, dukkha, anatta. Impermanency, changing, decaying and disappearing. The whole universe, there is no place or there is nothing to remain forever without changing, without decaying, without disappearing. Therefore, 
the Buddha did not encourage anybody to accept the religion, thinking that they can go and enjoy their life forever without any change. Then he said, throughout our life, from our birth up to the last moment, the whole life is nothing but suffering, physically and mentally. Living, working, earning means struggling for us to get rid of our suffering, for our survival. Therefore we tolerate our disturbances by considering for us to live, not to die. Otherwise, within few minutes we can die if we neglect all these duties. This is the uncertainty of our life. So up to the last moment we struggle for our survival not to die. But we cannot stop death. That is natural. Birth is natural, sicknesses are natural, old age is natural, and death is natural. If anything happened after our death, that is also natural. Not created by another body, whether God or the Buddha. It is natural occurrence. Whether you believe or not, whether you can understand or not, if anything happened after your death, it is also natural. Then the advice given by the Buddha, this is not the first and the last life. Continuity is there. But other living beings cannot think in that way. They never think that we existed before. They never think that after our death we will exist again. And they never prepare for the next existence, never think of their next life, only this life. As human beings, since we have a thinking mind, we can <coughs> understand Patirupa desa vasocha pubbecha katapunyata. These sayings of the Buddha in Mangala Sutra. Those who have done meritorious deeds during their previous birth, they will get the chance to be born in certain countries where they can lead harmless, peaceful, prosperous, happy life. When you consider what is happening in this world, in certain countries, almost every year, either earthquake, volcanic eruption, flood, fire, but as far as our life is concerned, we are not in danger. We can maintain some sort of confidence. We are protected. Therefore, we are not in trouble. Although we have physical and mental problems and pains and suffering. By knowing this existence again and again, The more we live, the more we have to suffer. Although we struggle not to die, in the end we have to surrender. We have to die. We cannot stop it. After that again, existence takes place. That existence takes place not according to the will of God or Buddha, according to our way of life here, how we have led, how we have used our human life, 
विथ इन दिस लाइफ टाइम ऑल आवर थिंकिंग टॉकिंग वर्किंग कंडीशन एक्यूमुलेट to produce the next existence next life become miserable or pleasurable according to our way of life today if our life is very unfortunate very miserable it is due to certain bad thing that we have done during our previous birth if we are very fortunate while others are suffering that means we have done some meritorious deeds during our last birth that is why we can lead peaceful happy prosperous life uh, this is the buddha's way of teaching without depending on anybody by taking responsibility for your own life then you know how to mold how to adjust how to create your way of life to avoid so much of sufferings and troubles and disturbances that we are facing and we continue life after life by doing good deeds we will continue but how long can we carry on that to your life because the mind is changing the mind can become good mind can become bad the changes can take place at any time therefore the more we live in this world the more we have to suffer physically and mentally everybody is grumbling accusing blaming condemning criticizing their life nobody is happy with his or her life always some sort of complain physically or mentally so as long as we exist in any part of the world we are not free from these problem they are natural occurrences we have advice given by the buddha you must be wise you must understand why you are suffering here how long can you maintain your life in this way your happiness your satisfaction how long that you can maintain next moment changes can take place everything is uncertain everything is changeable these are natural occurrences not created by the god or the buddha or anybody else ah uh, that understanding is the most important thing for us to mold our life to stop our physical and mental suffering so many religions as i mentioned earlier try to introduce only by following their religion you can attain you can gain permanent everlasting life to remain forever without changing the buddha rejected this belief saying there is no such uh world systems in this universe universe exists and world exist due to combinations of element and energies these elements and energies never remain forever without changing decaying again 
one element destroy the others either fire or water or wind one of these element destroy the whole world if anything happen to this world as natural occurrences disasters we must understand there are so many millions of world system where there are no living beings only world system exists and in those world system also same natural occurrences take place either fire or water or wind become the cause for the destruction of that world and same thing will happen to this world also therefore believe <coughs> that people maintain this is due to uh, god or devil or ghost it is our ignorance you have to use our common sense and understanding and uh, then we can understanding if any elements get together combine remain as a bundle these things never remain forever changes take place decaying take place then disintegrate after that dispersed particles energies energies never disappear now atom proton neutron electron never disappear no one can destroy their energies these energies turn into molecules again these molecules started to accumulate 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 after millions of years time again come into existence the world system therefore the buddha has said there is neither beginning nor end here in this world ah uh, that now you can understand where is the beginning where is the ending it is very uh, very low mentality to say there is a beginning created by so and so and there will be ending destroyed by so and so very narrow minded people think in that way the buddha has revealed the truth the nature of life nature of the world nature of existing things all are subjected to decay and this disintegration dissolution those who cannot understand this they create their imagination so by doing all these things we can go to heaven and enjoy our life forever and then they follow them but they cannot understand that is only an imagination again they think they don't want to do bad thing there is a hell so therefore we try not to do such bad thing because of hell in reality there is no such places as heaven and hell they believe heaven is above hell is low the buddha says those who believe <coughs> that hell is underground are foolish people he used this word because hell is not located anywhere in any part of the world and heaven is not located in any part of the universe 
but heaven and hell we can find everywhere where living beings exist. Here in this world we experience heavenly bliss and we suffer hell in this world. Person <coughs> from by birth up to the last breath life is nothing but suffering. Ah, that is hell. And many others from their birth up to the last breath they, they get the chance to enjoy their life without facing so many problems and troubles and disturbances. They are in heaven. This is the way how Buddha has explained. Therefore, don't create this imagination. There is a place for us to go and enjoy our life forever. That is heaven. And there is another place called hell. We have to suffer forever if you do all these things. This is the truth. Natural occurrences revealed by the Buddha. So intellectual <coughs> all over the world by using their scientific knowledge they come to know what they have written in their holy books are imagination. Because religions depend on belief. But scientists did not believe anything. They used their intelligence independently. Then they could understand. They have discovered many more things. In time to come, they may discover many more things, but we still have our imagination about all these things. For thousands of years, <coughs> how many imaginations we had about this world, about our life. But today, we came to know many things, not through religions, not through belief, but experiment done by the intellectual, scientists, psychologists, ah, they have explained. Then we come to know what is written in our holy book is not completely correct. It's another advice given by the Buddha. <coughs> You should not accept anything which is recorded in your holy book. Saying, it is in our holy book, therefore we must believe it. Anyone can write anything and later introduce, oh, this is given by the God, therefore you must accept. But great thinkers and scientists and intellectuals say, what they have written is wrong. Ah, that is why you say, even in the Buddhist book, there are certain things written, not the word uttered by the Buddha, but in the name of Buddhism, later they have written many things as Buddhism. When you compare these things with the scientific discoveries, we can understand these things are wrong. But not a single word uttered by the Buddha in this world who can say what the Buddha has said is wrong. Whether scientists or psychologists or great thinkers or philosophers, so far no one could say the Buddha is wrong. What is written in our religious book, also we should not accept as truth. Only the word uttered by the Buddha, uh, we can accept as truth. Is a dhammo sanantano. This dharma that I reveal is 
Sanantano, eternal, never change, never decay, never disappear. That is the truth. Dharma means natural occurrences. Teachings of the Buddha is called Dharma. Why? Since Buddha has explained how these natural occurrences take place without any influence of God or devil or ghost, these are natural occurrences. Then he explained how these things take place. Therefore his teaching is called Dharma. Again he said, whether the Buddhas appear or not, dharma exists forever in this world. Dharma is not created by the Buddha. Buddha never created anything. He realized, he understood what others cannot understand. Uh, that is why from time to time, the Buddha appeared in this world for us to remind, to reveal what we have forgotten, what we have distorted, what we have neglected and misinterpreted as dharma. But dharma exists forever. So after gaining enlightenment, he explained how these things take place without any God or without any Buddha or supernatural living being, these are natural occurrences. Your duty is to learn, to know what these things are. How, when such things happen, we should not create our own imagination. This natural destruction, tsunami. Many people say it is a punishment created by the God. All right, then who suffered? Children, women, innocent people had to suffer. But the culprit who created all sort of wicked, cruel, harmful, dangerous things are still living. Nothing has happened to them. How can we say this is created by the God to punish? Why does He want to punish? If we can create this world, if we can create this life, what is the difficulty for God to adjust to change their way of life when they are wrong, when they are bad, when they are wicked. But he doesn't know how to do that. He say, he will destroy, he will punish. The Buddha said, all these are imagination. Nobody to create, nobody to destroy. All these things are natural occurrences. Therefore, our duty is to know, try to understand how these things take place. Then we know how to adjust our way of life without becoming slaves to God or to Buddha or anybody. By maintaining our human dignity, maintaining our human intelligence, we can lead our human life peacefully. Uh, that is what religion can give us if we really follow religion, but not those existing religious labels. No questions, okay. What is it? How did Just now I mentioned, according to our own experience, 
it's a gradual development in our life. This is bad, this is good, this is moral, this is immoral. That realization appeared in our mind, uh, then we introduce humanism, not religion, humanism. Humanism means we develop our kindness, compassion, honesty, peace, uh, that is humanism. Later, many people invited God into humanism and said, this is given by the God. The Buddha never said, this is given by the God or this is given by the Buddha. These are natural occurrences. When you understand how these things take place, then you know how to adjust, how to develop certain good things and how to suppress all your bad things. Uh, religion come into existence. Okay, sharing of merit. Imina punya kamena upajaya gunutara Achari Upakaraja <coughs> Suryo Chandi Maharaja Gunavanta Narapiche Brahma Maharaja Nacha Loka Palacha Devata Yamo mitta manusaj Majjata veri kapiche Sabve zatta sukhiyantu Punyani pakatani me Sukhanche tividam dentu Kippam papeta omata Imina punya kame, imina undi zenat, ipaham sulabicewa, tanu pada nacedana, yezantani adamma, yaveni banato mama. Nasanto Zambadaye Jato Bari Bari Uju Chito Sati Panyo Sarleko Viriyatan Marara Bantu Noka Katuncha Viriyesume Dhammo nato aruttamo nato pacheka sambuddho sango nato taro mama tesottamanu bhavita maro kasanga bhattu Bhattu sabbhamgulam rakkhantu sabbhadevata Sabba Buddha and Bhavi and Sadas of Tibant. Bhatu Sabba Mangalam Rakan to Sabba Devata. Sabba Dhamma and Bhavi and Sadas of Tibant. Bhatu Sabba Mangalam Rakan to Sabba Devata. Sabba Sangha and Bhavi and Sadas of Tibant.